Hello and welcome back to the Musical Instrument Investigator. Uh, today we are on the website of the Auctioneers Tenants that are based in the UK. Now they have an auction that's uh, live and you can bid on um, of scientific and musical instruments, cameras and tools uh, which is due to complete on Wednesday the 10th of February 2021. Uh, now we just want to have a look at the musical instrument part of this um there are some other interesting things as well um but we will just stick to the musical instruments um a bit of information here so buyer's premium is 20 percent plus vat so that's 24 percent on top of kind of what you're paying uh, of what the kind of the hammer price is um there's no public viewing for this auction or any auctions until further notice because of covid uh, so condition reports and extra images are available on request and in some instances we can offer a video call okay so once again like i said before if you're buying a musical instrument unless you really know what you're looking for you need to view it in person or get as much information as possible um we'll see now because i've had a very quick look at this auction already that the photos are absolutely atrocious like these are terrible photos and i this auction house is usually not that great in photos but why in a pandemic would you just not put all of your best photos up already rather than make people ask for extra photos the condition report you know okay i can understand maybe you want to kind of hold that back until serious inquiries but if you have good photos then just put them up but we'll get into that soon i mean they don't even have good photos up at all it's not like they withhold a few there's none of them are good but anyway rant over there's not that many items in this sale so we'll just go through it and i think this is an example for me of an auction house that really needs to step up to what's happening the current situation uh, and you know provide better photos uh for people because you know you have to go digital now because of the current situation to me this is just poor poor photos here uh anyway let's carry on so let's start with the first lot here so it's a bundle of mixed bows let's kind of see what we can see so i mean like this is the you know these obviously some workshop trade bows a few of them are broken not too exciting but i mean this is the image that you have here uh, and you can't really uh see much from that so we'll just close that so bundle of mixed bows uh estimate 30 to 50 pounds so that's pretty much that's the information that they give you so like i said they can hopefully provide you additional photos um uh, if you contact them i mean for something like this a bundle of bows you probably wouldn't expect much more information but for some of the other items uh, i think they can do a lot better okay so a cello 29 and a half inches two piece back up about 30 and a half inches blah 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 um so no label pegs bushed and has head neck graft condition report front has had base bar crack and sound post crack similar to back repaired so they give you at least some information here estimate uh 1600 to 2000 so let's have a quick look so that's the kind of one picture we get i mean it's difficult to see uh, and there you go there's a kind of picture of the scroll you can see the peg bushings there uh, you can see some repairs here but i mean you can't there's not even a picture of the back of the instrument as standard i mean you know i think this is not a good sign but hopefully if you contact them they'll provide it but why you would not provide that straight away i don't know uh, another cello uh, labeled imported by leslie shepherd and made in hungary with bow and soft case uh, condition report lax bridge well yep yeah, i mean stating the uh bloody obvious there really so i mean this looks like a pretty low quality trade instrument here i don't think any cellist is going to get particularly excited about this um right another mix -lock. three violin bodies in various states of disarray um disassembly with some or disarray and disassembly rather than disarray but they are probably in disarray uh, some accessories and small quantity of wood blocks together with two violin six and four bows one stamp taut see what we can see yeah i mean you see a few bows a few bits of violin not much to see there uh, 80 to 120 pounds uh, viola 16 and a quarter inches two piece back by john mather okay 
four music stands and a framed facsimile part musical score, two to three hundred pounds. Let's see. Okay, very nice, very fancy, and there's a picture of the scroll. But why take a picture of a music stand when you could have had a picture of the back of the actual viola, which people would be interested in? I mean, seriously, like, I think this auction has just actually really wound me up just by just how terrible uh, <laughs> the photos are. I mean, seriously, tenants, like it's a digital auction world at the moment because people can't get around because of covid so you know up your game really you know you need to learn what to what to do uh anyway that's me ranting uh viola eugene gartner stuttgart um there you go you just get one picture of that you know make of it it looks like fairly tradey uh violin uh, one piece branded GBG rectangular box hundreds and lowers Geo Baptista Gabrielli for sitting friends of seventeen fifty four to five thousand. So, you know, like I say, I mean, if this if something has an estimate of that amount of money, why not just include a, a bit more information? Uh, it would seem sensible. Uh, violin, uh, two piece back, labelled Giuseppe Bossi, Stradella, estimate 1500 to 2000. Yep, it looks looks interesting, worth investigating some more photos potentially. It would be nice to see more now. Uh, violin, two piece back by John Mather, labelled John, da, 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 da. Harrogate 1989, estimate two to three hundred pounds. So let's have a quick look at this. Oh, we've got a picture of the back now, so I'm not sure why some instruments do and sometimes don't. I mean, this is, these photos are just random. It's like, oh, okay, let's have a front and a back and then like a kind of weird angle of the F holes and let's not show the scroll or anything. Like, I mean, it, it defies logic. Anyway, another one. Uh, violin, no label, condition, has had neck, head graft, pegs bush, various cracks repaired. Okay, so the estimate is four to five thousand. It has no label. It has peg bushings, and it has a graft. So it may have some age. Potentially, it may have some age. It could be eighteenth century, or it could be early nineteenth century, or it could be even more modern. You don't know. There's no information here. There's no even kind of suggestion of like provenance or anything here to kind of add any reason why the estimate would be four to five thousand that that's a high estimate for a violin that they provided absolutely no information before so you know it's just bizarre anyway uh violin two piece back no label has some repairs to scroll so it's got kind of cheek repairs let's have a quick look at this estimate 60 to 90 that's a bit more of a friendly price range for us people on a budget uh, bows don't look too impressive uh, you can see here that's the cheek repair at least on one side they're talking about you know looks potentially interesting but once again not really enough photos uh, here so another violin one piece back labeled Alex Smiley uh, Cross Hill Glasgow so we like these Scottish instruments estimate 1200 to 1500 you know if it's a genuine Scottish instrument it looks like it may be fairly well made out of nice wood then you know that probably seems a reasonable estimate once again not enough kind of photos uh violin labeled charlotte millot meercourt can you report horseshoe repair to the back button so we'll assume that the back button on the back if we had a picture of the back which we don't um you know there's been a broken button or maybe it was made like that some instruments were made like that at a time to kind of emulate older kind of uh wear and things like that but once again you, you know you've listed an issue with an instrument and then you don't show that in the picture so ridiculous uh another violin two piece back ebony fingerboard uh labeled so antonio stradivarius so this is just a tradey violin with a tradey bow not particularly exciting so we can move on from that i mean that this instrument 
you know i think that's a probably enough pitches really i think most people can kind of tell what that is but the other instruments this is just not acceptable amount of information here uh so another violin ebony fingerboard labeled nicholas amatus so uh pegs rebushed okay let's have a quick look at this yeah you can see that they've uh, definitely been rebushed it's an interesting scroll there i mean this is an instrument that i definitely like to see what the back would look like so it'd be worth kind of investigating one to 200 uh bum bum violin labeled nicholas bartholini da, 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 da. france 1810 let's see i mean very difficult to tell without good photos uh, another one violin two piece back stamped in place of label uh bum 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 stamped steiner let's see so we can't see that but i presume that on the back there's a steiner stamp as you get with a lot of these kind of tradey violins kind of 19th century ish so violin john matha so john matha harrogate 2001 so a more recent instrument so they've got a bit of a back photo so there you go you know uh, not the greatest photos but a front and a back a scroll and the fos like this is the absolute bare minimum photos that should be up for a violin like absolute bare minimum you need to see the front the back and the scroll you know the, at least some image of the scroll like as a bare minimum like anything else is just ridiculous and it's a waste of people's time um do 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 right violin do 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 so evidence of a head and neck graft like which can obviously say offer age but once again you know you don't show the, the picture of that so you know the front it does look potentially interesting i'd like to see the back but you know estimate 80 to 100 pounds these these things of interest you need to kind of give a few more uh photos here so violin two piece back labeled lorenzo storioni cremona 1781 has had head and neck graft some repairs to scroll chief uh, cheeks so once again like this is an instrument which is placed at a higher estimate um you'd expect to see some more photos really um you'd want to see the back and all of these things they just it's just bizarre very bizarre uh violin two piece back with illegible label so yeah i mean it's hard to say four to five hundred okay Violin bow stamped A, Vorin Fields. Uh, ba -ba -bum. I mean, you can kind of see what's going on here. At least you've got a closer up kind of picture here of the frog, but it'd be nice to see a picture of the head as well. So you can really see how different this auction is to the other ones that we've covered. It's very bizarre. Uh, at least we have some different instruments though. So we've got an alto saxophone by Con cased um with a mouthpiece so let's have a look uh, there's a photo there a bit of a close-up i'm not really sure if that's a uh, acceptable photos for people looking for saxophones but uh at least it's got something so a sousaphone in e flat with a detachable bell and decorative engraving maker's name york grand rapids michigan 28 inch bell diameter with tuning crook and mouthpiece so that's something a little bit interesting yep a clarinet by f boisson paris bell and upper joints both stamped with maker's name with a le fleur mouthpiece let's have a look at that well you get the idea but i think it would be good to see a few more photos that's my rant at the moment is more photos please uh french horn full valve double engraved imperial made by boozing hawks made in england low pitch with a paxman mouthpiece so we see here gives you the information uh, it'd be good to see more photos uh, a yamaha flute main body stamped nippon gaki so 
There you go. An interesting Yamaha clarinet there. And a, or and a flute. Yep. Oh, Yamaha flute and clarinet. Interesting. Let's move on. Long model cornet by Yamaha. So, I mean, I'm not sure about kind of brass or woodwind instruments, but I mean, Yamaha is a, is a very good make of instruments in general or kind of respectable uh, level. Cornet Rosedale by Gear for Music. So, I mean, I think most people know Gear for Music is just kind of uh, mainly kind of budget ish kind of music supplier, like the UK's version of Thoman. Not to say that some of this stuff might not be good, but you know, probably not the greatest. And see, I mean, there's a lot of pictures of these instruments, so I just don't really understand um, how they're deciding what pictures to take for these instruments. Anyway, a fanfare trumpet with detachable bell stamped finger and valve block with serial number. So, I mean, this is uh, a bit more interesting. And once again, you have one picture. So I think more pictures needed here. Uh, a cornet by Yamaha with mouthpiece and Dennis Wick straight mute. And there's your case. Very shiny anyone interested in that uh, a trumpet with rotor valve stamped A and B flat bell engraved let's have a quick look at that I mean at least this auction has some instruments other than kind of just violins which I think is a, is a plus because we can't be looking at all of that at the time uh, aria electroacoustic guitar plastic bowl single cut I mean this is very kind of standard but it's an interesting uh, sound hole there a bit different but you do get a few like that nothing particularly exciting unfortunately a trombone by boozy and hawks stamped lp artists says yep there's a few things here and a flugel horn in e flat and a trumpet. Yep, so there's a few different things there. A few different items up for grabs. A pair of clarinets, both stamped on all sections. Jacques Albert. Both upper and lower joint stamp 150. Longest measurement 610 with mouthpiece. Oh, if you're interested in a uh, pair of clarinets. Electric guitar, Squire Strat by Fender, reverse of headstock. Um, and then there's a couple of other. Hona classical guitar. And another acoustic guitar labelled Catania Carmelo. So, yeah, nothing super exciting there. I mean, the Fender Squire Strat, I guess it depends. Uh, well, it's a Chinese one, so it's not going to be as valuable as some of the the other ones um the japan squires etc uh so fender 60th anniversary stratocaster made in the usa uh, i mean it's the same even for the guitars i mean the pictures are just rubbish basically absolute pure garbage um fender jaguar always very nice 96 1970 so quick look here with CITES license okay interesting there's a few more pictures here I mean I think these older instruments it's definitely worth looking at and getting a few more inf getting a bit more information make sure they've got all the correct parts correct serial numbers that's something you probably need to investigate a bit more uh, Fender Precision Bass Guitar 1976 Let's see Society's license. Um, so yeah, once again, I think these older Fender, or if you're Gibson or Martin or anything, it's worth kind of looking a bit closer because you do get some dubious ones with parts switched around. Oh, amplifiers! Fender Stage 100 amplifier made in Mexico. No power lead, no kettle lead included. So no additional information. Fender Stratocaster. 
1962. Red bodies, cream scratch plate. Sites, somewhere to finger wall, somewhere tear and damage finish. So there's a bit more information here. I mean, it's definitely worth looking to see if this is had refinish or anything. This strikes me as quite a low estimate, so I'd definitely be interested to see a bit more information. Condition reports. Ooh, Fender Stratocaster 1963. Three control knobs. Significant wear to both frets and fretboard. Selector switch very stiff to move. Not working. Two to three thousand. So here they have a few more pictures. I mean, this is getting, this is more respectable level of photos. There's just no consistency in the photographs in this auction at all. Another Fender Stratocaster. This looks like someone's getting rid of their whole collection here. So 1976. Uh, not so many pictures on this. So if you're uh, into Fender guitars, then I think it's worth checking out this auction for sure. Uh, Fender Telecaster, 1975. So people, someone with a lot of kind of 60s, 70s uh, Fender guitars here. That's quite uh, interesting. Uh, Gibson Blue Ridge Custom Acoustic Guitar, 1967. Kalamazoo, the old plant in the USA, which is now owned and kind of run by uh, heritage guitars so okay yamaha so it's a more yamaha stuff fg110 acoustic guitar i mean yeah i like a lot of these yamaha instruments i think they're fairly decent they make some very good high end stuff banjo four string 18 frets 11 inch head stamped the windsor tenor popular model three with metal resonator interesting for you tenor banjo lovers i think uh windsor is quite a good make or decent enough uh banjo banjo five string banjo so it's a whole mandolin banjo. So a whole load of different types of banjos here. One needs a new skin there. Ozark Countryman. Where's a banjo collection? There's a few. Uh, another five string banjo. John Gray and Sons Limited, or L London, in fact. Let's have a quick look. Yep, so good few banjos for people into that. Another five string banjo. And another banjo. So interesting inlays on that uh, banjo. It's quite curious. It's yeah, interesting. Interesting banjo indeed. Epiphone by Gibson, five string banjo. Yeah, we're in the banjo party. A ukulele banjo, 16 fr frets with plaque on head scroll. George Formby registered. Interesting stag, so it's a budget. Uh, yeah. Oh, that's the other. Sorry, there's a stag. Uh, mandolin isn't it and uh, a george formby banjo so yes just to clarify uh interesting yeah flat back stag mandolin and then a ukulele banjo george formby uh, a banjo i think as uh, george formby was uh paid <laughs> played in fact actually I remember many years ago having an um, um, argument with someone I worked with about how, um, what instrument George Formby played and one of us was adamant it was a ukulele and the other one's adamant that it was a banjo 
uh, and we just had a massive argument and kind of placed a bet and then we looked it up and it basically said that he played an instrument between a ukulele and a banjo called that he called a banjolele and we both just laughed at each other and we never said anything else about it again so uh that's a bit of uh old uh work history there uh, another ukulele banjo uh george formby made in the gdr uh, let's carry on a concertina English system by Lacanel, London, 48 button. It's amazing how popular these uh, concertinas are. You know, some of them go for big, big money. There's three to five hundred. They always seem to sell. Some of them just go, yeah, it's crazy. Handbells set of 19. Interestingly, I was in the uh, Scouts for a little bit and I did actually play the handbells and actually it was quite, quite enjoyable. I'll be honest, I don't think I was particularly good at it or in time, but uh, no, it was good. Uh, ba -ba -ba. Pierre Montreux related items, including autograph book and batons. So there you go. Some conducting fun there. Uh, let's go on to the next one. Various instruments. So you've got a flat back mandolin. Uh, some kind of balalaika a violin and a brass instrument most likely a baritone horn so it's all a bit random i quite like the interesting paintings on that uh, balalaika it's curious um american made musical box plays eight airs interesting it's going a bit out of our territory here but i think music box is is fair game to comment on uh, symphonium disc musical box with sublime harmony quite interesting these kind of mechanical stuff actually if you're in the uk i mean i'm sure it's closed because of covid but there is a kind of musical instrument museum in brentford that i've never been to which is all about kind of mechanical musical instruments and organs and things like that which i think it would have like larger big musical boxes and big mechanical organs and things like that if you're ever interested i should definitely go a uh, good piano forte to return musical box um, another musical box there uh, and now i think we're pretty much at the end because we're just on vinyl tim buckley vinyl so i think that's kind of uh the end oh actually well maybe not we've got some valves i guess if you're for amps and stuff like that but maybe a bit far fetched uh, i think that is it now because we're on to sextants so we're on to scientific instruments now so yes that was the musical instrument auction well all in all i remain extremely unimpressed by the photos on this auction uh or lack of uh but nevertheless let's have a, a pick of the auction so i'm gonna pick uh this a uh, violin by John Mather, a uh, Harrogate 2001. Um, for the fact that it's an English violin, I'm interested in English violins, and it actually has some pictures, so I can actually see what it looks like. We can see the front, looks fine enough. It's the back, looks pleasant enough. Varnish colour is maybe a bit bright orange, but looks curious. Um, you know, the F holes look interesting enough um yeah and it has an estimate two to three hundred pounds it seems reasonable it'll probably go for a bit more than that i would have thought maybe three to four hundred potentially but that looks like potential and i'm happy with those photos a lot more than the other ones so i think that's uh believable so yeah i think this has been an interesting auction but the the poor photographs and lack of i just find it's unacceptable in these current times and to ask people to request further photos i think it doesn't really make any sense but yep yeah. uh violin by john matha harrogate you are the pick of uh this auction many thanks for tuning in to the musical instrument investigator i hope that you enjoyed the video if you did then please like uh, subscribe and turn on notifications and watch out for the next video coming soon